Hello everyone and welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we will be taking a look at functions and events and how we can use them to keep our code organized, reusable and flexible. Let's get started. So before we jump into Unreal, let's first learn about functions. So what is a function? A function is a block of code that is given a name and only runs when it's explicitly called. This is useful because it allows us to keep code segmented and organized, but most importantly, it allows us to reuse code as needed. Functions can also take input information, also known as input parameters, and they can also return information, also known as output parameters. This allows us to make our code inside our functions generic, since we can take specific parameters as input and return a result based on those parameters. Because the code inside a function is isolated, we can also create what we call local variables, variables that only exist within the function. These variables are created when the function is called and are destroyed when the execution ends. Now let's go ahead and jump into Unreal to see how it's done. And now that we're back in Unreal, let's go back to our Blueprint class and let's click on Event Graph. And for our first function, let's keep things simple and try to recreate the exact same functionality that we see here. So from our description earlier, we know that a function can take input parameters, such as an array, and it could return an output parameter, such as a string that we can use to print. So let's go ahead and do just that. And let's go to our functions category here and click on the plus sign. And we're going to name our function fn get random value. I like to use the prefix fn for all of my functions so they're easier to find when I'm searching for them. You can name them whatever you like, but for this example, I'm going to stick with fn get random value. Let's go ahead and compile and let's go back to our event graph. We can now go ahead and click and drag our function to the event graph. And you can see that we have a new node with an input and an output execution pins. If we click on it, we see on the right hand side on the details panel that we can now add inputs and outputs by clicking on the plus sign. And we know that we want to add a string array input. So go ahead and click on the plus sign here. And let's call this input array, make this a string, and then change this to an array. Now let's go and add an output pin, click on the plus sign. And in this case, let's call this output string. And let's change this back from an array to a single value. And as you can see, already we're starting to see how we can use this function to replicate this functionality. So let's go ahead and copy our array and connect it to our function. And let's go ahead and copy our print string and connect it to the end of our function here. Connect it as so. And now that we can see that we're going to input our string array to our function and the function will return an output string, which will then be printed by our print string. Let's go ahead and make the print string a little bit longer. Let's say five seconds to make things easier. And now let's go back to our function and try to recreate this functionality. So select and copy these nodes here. Let's go back to our function. And you can see what we have here. We have an initial node with an input and a return node with our output. So go ahead and drag it. And let's paste the nodes from before. And you can see that right now we will have an input which can go into random and an output which will be a output string. So first let's go ahead and add a sequence node here. We've done that before in a previous lesson. And for our first sequence we will simply select the actual string. So disconnect this from here and we're going to add it at the bottom here. And 
simply connect the input array to our random node here. And let's create a local variable that will hold the actual string that will be outputted here. So if you go here to the local variables section and click on the plus sign, let's name this string selection. And now we will drag it to our graph and select set string selection and connect it to the first option here. And here we'll type cookie games. Let's do the same thing for all the other options. And now that we have our string selections, all we need to do is return that value. So let's connect our sequence node to our switch statement and the second node here to our return node, as so. Then we'll simply connect our string selection to the output string. Let's go ahead and compile. So let's see what our function is doing here. We're taking an input array, selecting a random element, using the switch statement to grab one of the options, then setting our string selection variable to the correct value. Then we're simply returning the string selection as our output string. If we go back to our event graph, we see that we're basically doing the exact same thing as our code here. So if we now connect our begin play node to our function, let's go ahead and compile, save, and let's go back to our map. And if we click simulate, let's see what happens. You'll see that we have the exact same thing. And the reason we have two variables here that are printed is because we have two instances of our class. So let's go ahead and delete one to make things easier. And now if we click on simulate again, we see that we have a random value being picked and printed. Now let's go back to our blueprint. And now just to drive the point home, let's see if we can do one more thing inside our function. So if we go back to our construction script, we see that right now we are changing the light intensity of our light inside the construction script. Let's go ahead and do something similar and set a different intensity based on our selection. So go ahead and copy these nodes here. Let's go back to our event graph and let's paste them here. And let's go ahead and connect them like this. And now we can see that we can add another output parameter that we can then use for the light intensity. So click on our function here. Let's add another output. Let's call this light intensity and let's make it a float. And now we can simply connect our output pin here to our set intensity node. Now, if we go back to our function, we see that we have another output pin here on our return node and we need to add a new variable to change the light intensity. So let's go back to our local variables tab here, click on the plus sign and let's call our variable intensity. Let's go ahead and change this to a float. And do the same thing that we've done here. We're going to drag and set our intensity and connect it as so. So for these three examples, let's make it really obvious. For the first one, let's make it 500. Let's copy our node for the other two options. For this one, let's make it 5,000. And for this one, let's make it 50,000. This will make it very obvious which selection was made. And finally, let's go ahead and drag again intensity and connect it to the light intensity output node. Let's compile. Let's go back to our event graph. And let's make sure that we have everything connected correctly. We will make a selection from our MyArray array. We'll return an output string that will be printed in a light intensity float then will be used to set a new intensity for our light. If we go back to our map and click on simulate, we'll see that we have Epic Games and we have more intensity here. Let's go ahead and stop, click again. And we have Koki Games with a lot less intensity here. So clearly our function is working. Let's stop and go back to our blueprint.
Now we can go ahead and get rid of these nodes here and simply put this back like so. Now let's talk about events. We actually have been working with events for a few lessons now. As you can see, event begin play and event tick are default events that come with all of the classes in our real engine. Unreal has a ton of pre-built classes that we can use, but we can also create our own custom events easily. So let's go ahead and create our first custom event. Right click and search for custom event and simply select add custom event. Let's name our event EV get random value. As you can see, in this case, I use the prefix EV for all of my events so they are easier to find when we're searching for them. Just like before, feel free to name your events whatever you like, but I find this naming convention to be quite useful in my case. So now, instead of having the event begin play call our function directly, let's simply connect our function to our custom event. And now we'll simply call our custom event from our event begin play. So drag from the event begin play and search for EV get random value and select it. And now our event begin play is calling our custom event, which in turn is now calling our function. So if we go ahead and compile and go back to our level and click simulate, you should see that the exact same thing as before happened. Let's go ahead and stop, go back to our blueprint. So in this case, no change actually occurred. We are simply using an event to call our function. Two things that are important to know about events. If you select your event like so, you'll see that we are only allowed to add input events. For some reason, we don't have any output events for our custom events. And that is because unlike functions, events are not guaranteed to execute in the same frame they are called, which is why we don't have any output events. We can easily add any input events. Let's just add one, for example. And you can see that we have a node here that appears and we could use an input in our event to do something, but there are no outputs. Now let's go ahead and remove this input since we're not using it. And you can do that by simply going to the inputs and clicking on the X sign right here. Go ahead and compile. And now we're back to where we were before. One interesting thing to note is that events can also be called within the editor at design time. So with our event selected, if we go back to our details panel, notice that we have a checkbox called call in editor. If we go ahead and enable it and compile, let's go back to our map and let's select our blueprint instance in the level. And if you look at the details panel, you see that not only do we have the previous properties, but we have an actual button called EV get random value. And if we press the button, see what happens. We're actually calling our custom event. And as we call it, we notice that we get a random value and the intensity of our light changes based on that selection. Now let's go back to our blueprint. So as you can see here, we're using the event begin play to call our custom event, which then calls a function, which grabs a random selection from our array prints our selection and sets our light intensity, but because we're using a custom event, we can also call the same event within the editor to apply that same functionality. One thing to note though is that if our custom event has inputs, we are then not allowed to call it within the editor. So if you kept the input from before and you checked call in editor, you will actually not see that button something really important to remember. Hopefully you can see how useful our custom events can be and start thinking about ways that you can further customize your blueprint instances by using custom events 
and culling them from the editor. I personally use this quite a bit in my own blueprints as a way to further customize all of the instances in my level. So let's do a quick recap. Functions execute all their code in the same frame they are called in. Functions can take inputs and outputs. Functions can have local variables and functions cannot have delays. Events do not guarantee that all the code can be run in the same frame. Events can only take inputs. Events cannot have local variables. However, events can have delays and can be called from inside the editor. And I know that we haven't covered delays yet, but don't worry, that will be covered in the next lesson. If you want to practice what we learned, go back to our function and try to add additional functionality. And here's a challenge for you. Use the light option structure inside the function to set a random light color every time the function is called. And that's all for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.